Hey, Verald. Yeah, I thought it was Zach the Demon Lord. Hey, world, it is I, Zach the Demon Lord, and yet again another YouTube video. You know what's going on. This is two of the four I'm doing in a row. Uh, this poem is the second poem of Gudrun. That is the section we are in in the Poetic Edda. Okay, let's get into it. Another poem in which Gudrun recounts her sorrows up, sorrows up until the death of her brothers. Her, oh, okay, so in the last one it was the brothers that died. Catching on. Uh, her narrative fills in the events between the end of the first poem of Gudrun and the poem of Atli, summarizing the events surrounding the death of Sigurd and explaining how she was compelled to marry Atli against her will. The poem is probably one of the later ones in the collection. Volsinga Saga chapter 34 fills out how Gudrun spent her time in the interval between the death of Sigurd and the marriage of Atli. King Theodrek was with Atli and had lost almost all his men there. Theodrek uh, and Gudrun lamented their woes together. Uh, she spoke to him and said, I was a girl of girls. My mother brought me up. Radiant in the woman's quarters. I loved my brothers greatly until Gyuki endowed me with gold. Endowed me with gold and gave me to Sigurd. Uh, so towered Sigurd over the sons of Gyuki. Like a green leaf growing out of the grass. Or a long-legged stag above the sharp-eyed beasts. Or red glowing gold next to dull silver. Until my brothers begrudged me. Begrudged it me. Uh, that I would. That I had a husband more prominent than all. Uh, they could not sleep. They could not judge clap, judge cases until they had put Sigurd to death. Uh, Grani ran from the assembly. The uproar could be heard. And then Sigurd himself did not come. And the saddle horses were dripping with sweat. Though used to laboring beneath um, to killer, the killers, sorry, beneath the killers. Uh, weeping, I went to talk to Grani. Cheeks wet with tears. I asked the horse for news. Grani drooped his head then, hid it in the grass. The horse knew that his master was no more. Long I turned it over, long my thoughts ran on, until I questioned the war guardian about the prince. Gunnar looked downwards, Hogan told me, about Sigurd's painful death. Struck down, he lies beyond the water, Guthorm's slayer, given to the wolves. <laughs> Look for Sigurd. There on the road southwards, uh, there you'll hear the raven shriek, the eagle shriek, rejoicing in the carrion. The wolves are howling over your husband. How, Hogni, can you bring yourself to tell of such terrible harm to me, bereft of joy? May ravens tear, you, tear out your heart uh, across more far-flung lands than you can know of. Hogni answered once only. Not inclined to be cheerful out of great grief. More you'd have to weep for, Gudrun, from this if ravens were to tear out my heart. <laughs> Away I went from the conversation to the wood, to gather the wolves' leavings. I could not weep nor strike my hands together, nor lament uh, my man as other women do. There I sat close to death over Sigurd. Uh, the night seemed to me as dark as the dark of the moon, as I sat grieving over Sigurd. The best of all beasts the wolves would have been if they took my life, or if I was burned up like uh, birchwood. I walked from the mountain five days together until I recognized the high hall of Hulf. I s or half, maybe. Um, I sat with Thora uh, seven half years, Hakon's daughter, in Denmark. She embroidered in gold for my pleasure uh, southern halls and Danish wands. Um... She sewed pictures of men's war play together, a uh, prince's warriors on our ha handiwork, red shields, hunters champions, a sword band, a helmet band, a royal retinue. Uh, Sigmund's ship, ships glided from the land, with golden beast masks and carved prows. Uh, we showed in our embroidery how they fought Sigar and Sigir, uh, south in Fion. Uh, then Grimhild uh, learned. Queen of the Goths, what my state of mind was. She threw down her embroidery, summoned her sons, perversely she asked this, Who would compensate the sister of her son, who would pay for the slain husband? 
Eagerly, Gunnard offered, offered gold to settle the matter. Hogni said the same. Uh, she asked then that those who wished to go should settle the steed, equip a wagon, ride a horse, let a hawk fly, shoot arrows from a U-bow, uh, Valdor with the Danes, with uh, Yaris Leif, Leif, a Maud the third with Yaris, Yaris Kar, and they went, uh, almost princely. Uh, the troops of the Longobards, uh, they had red cloaks ornamented, uh, burnies, uh, towering helmets girded with sh short, short swords, there's a lot of tongue twisters going on, man. <laughs> they had dark hair. Each wanted to pick out treasure for me. Pick out treasure and speak comfortably. Comforting words. Telling you, some tongue twisters and I can't speak right. <laughs> to see if they could, for many, for my many sorrows, offer trusty pledges. I could not come to trust them. Grimhild uh, brought me a cup to drink from, cool and bitter, so I should not remember the strife. That drink was augmented with fateful power, with the cool sea with sacrificial blood. In the drinking horn were all kinds of runes, cut and red-colored. I could not interpret them, a long heather fish, an uncut corn ear, uh, of the Hadding's land, uh, the entrails of beasts. Many bad things were mixed into that beer. The herbs of all the woodland and burnt acorns, the dew of the hearth, the innards from sacrifice, boiled pig's liver, since it blunted the strife. And then they forgot, those who drink it, all the prince's death in the hall, three kings came into my presence, uh, before she addressed herself to me. Gold I will give you, Gudrun, as a gift, a great deal of treasure from your dead father, red gold rings, uh, Hlodver's hall, <laughs> Precious bed hangings for the fallen prince. Hunnish girls to do your delicate weaving. To work in gold for your pleasure. You alone shall control the wealth of Budli. By adorned, be adorned with gold and given to Atli. I do not want to go to another man, nor to marry Brynhild's brother. It is not fitting for me to increase the family of Budli's son, nor to enjoy my life. Don't think of repaying the men's wicked deeds. Uh, that which we brought about before. You'll feel as if they were still alive, Sigurd and Sigmund, if you have sons. I cannot, Grimhild, hurtle onwards into happiness, nor nourish hope of a war-eager warrior, since the corpse greedy one and the raven bitterly drink Sigurd's heart blood. I have found the most highly born prince of all, the most prominent, him you'll be married to, or else till your life's end, you'll be manless if you won't take this one. Stop pressing so perversely this unholy kinship upon me. He'll make ready ruin for Gunnar, tear out the heart from Hogni. Uh, then I won't delay until I, may, t until I take the life of the vigorous man. Of the sword plays, Speeder. Weeping, Grimhild heard these words, which uh, portended doom for her sons and great uh, balefulness for her boys. Lands I'll give you troops of men, Vinbjorg, Volbjorg, if you'll take them. Possess them all your days, and be content, daughter. I'll choose him from among the kings coerced into this by my kin. He won't be a husband whom I can love, nor will my brother's bad fate save my sons. Quickly each man was seen to his horse, and the southern uh, women lifted into the wagon. Um, several days we rode over the chilly land, and another seven we beat over the waves. For a third week we drove over dry land. There the door guards opened the gate of High Citadel as we rode into the court. Sorry, I got a hair in my mouth. Artley awoke me, uh, for I seemed to be full of evil, foreboding, of the death of kinsmen. So just now the Norns awakened me. Uh, he wanted me to interpret prophecies of trouble. I thought that you, Gudrun, daughter of Guki, ran me through with a malice mixed sword. Dreaming of iron represents fire, of the anger of a woman. Uh, deception and delusion. I'll cauterize your injuries, comfort and heal you. 
though it pains me to do it. I thought that in the meadow the saplings had fallen, those which I had wanted to let grow tall. They were torn up by the roots, reddened with blood, carried in to the be to the bench and offered me to eat. I thought that my hawks flew from my hand without their prey to a hall of evil. Their hearts I chewed up, mixed with honey, sorrowful in spirit, gorged with blood. I thought my pups were loosed from my grasp, deprived of joy both of them howled. I thought their flesh became carrion, corpse flesh which I was made to enjoy. That means men will discuss sacrifice and cut the heads off, white beasts doomed within a few nights. The retinue will consume them just before dawn. I lay down then. I did not want to sleep obstinate on the bed of pain. That I remember well. And that's the end of second poem of Gudrun. Uh, what I can kind of get from this is like... Gudrun is uh, having, you know, some problems uh, uh, with... Uh, having Sigurd have been killed and, you know, being having him be dead. Uh, she's kind of getting pressured by others to marry Atli, but she does not really want to marry him. Uh, and yeah, people are just kind of doing whatever they can. They're like, yo, if you marry this dude, I'll give you all these cool trinkets. Take the trinkets. And she's like, eh, I don't really care. I don't really want to. Like, he won't be a, a good match for me. But yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I get from it. If you got more out of it, let me know in the comments. But yeah, um, if you liked it, give it a like. You know, please subscribe, share it with your friends and family if they're interested in this sort of thing. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Until then, hey -do.